Hello everyone and welcome to our designer's guide to wrapping a vehicle in Adobe Illustrator. I'll be taking you through the entire industry standard process from start to finish, jam packed with content people spend a lot of time and money to learn, all in one episode for free. And you can support this series by simply liking, commenting, subscribing, or sharing this episode, which will go a long way in the future for a production of episodes like this one. Without further ado, let's get started with our design. And you'll want to begin by finding the vehicle outline template for the vehicle you'll be designing a wrap for. And you could just search online for vehicle outline template. And I downloaded this template from Pro Vehicle Outlines. They're not a sponsor or affiliated in any way, but they're definitely a good resource with a lot of different templates. Like they have emergency vehicle cruisers and helicopters and cranes. So they have a lot of different vehicles. I'm just going to come up with a design on the spot here. I want to do kind of a partial wrap and then I'll also do a door decal which is the most common vehicle wrap slash decal. So let's just create a circle roughly the size of the vehicle a bit larger and I'll make that red and I'm just going to make a generic sail sign so I'm not going to really be talking too much while I'm designing it's pretty basic but I will fast forward the video so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so that's done. And now I'll just make a, another generic door decal here. So now if we actually want to attach this design to the, to the Jeep, um, first I'll ungroup all of these and then just select the outline of the vehicle and then all the windows and different body lines that I want to include like the windows and the tail light. I believe it's over. No, I can avoid that, which is good. And then that should be all. And then I'll copy what I selected with command C and I'll paste it in place with command shift and V. And then I'll go to object compound path and make and then i will select with shift the decal behind the uh the body and then i can hit command 7 to create a clipping mask so as you see the selections i made push the design backwards and that placement is terrible obviously that text is <laughs> unreadable but um yeah, let's see if we can adjust that we have to go into our layers and into our clipping mask Um, with this group. Um, there's not really much we can do. Let's just, let's just pretend we can see that and that is a nice design. So, that is what you would want to do if you're sending a proof to a client. But now let's actually set up this wrap for print by creating a new document. And we'll make it 227. This is actually the max. This is an oversized artboard. And we'll have the color mode CMYK and the raster effects at 300 and measurements at inches. And then we will click OK. And then I will just copy this single side in since this is the only design we have. Um, I accidentally copied the second Jeep as well. I guess they're just connected. I'll use the direct selection tool. And then command C and command V to paste. So this design is at a uh, 120th scale or this outline I should say. So if we go to our new document, we can go to object transform and scale and we can scale this to thousand percent. So that will bring it to full scale. So now if we select our 
design. I'll start with the door decal. It'll, you'll see the actual size of this. So this is 26 inches by, you know, just over four inches. And you can actually make your adjustments to life sizes now because it's not 1 20th inch, which if I select this, obviously it's 1 20th that size. But yeah, anyways. Getting these set up for print. Now, designing is the fun and easy part. This is the tedious part. So let's select our designs. I'll go into the clipping mask and select the partial wrap and the door decal with command C and I'll just paste it below with command V. So this is 53 by 53. Um, and that seems to be covering all that we need to, so that's good. And as we know, this is 26 by four. So now we have to think about actual vinyl, what this is gonna be printed on. And most printers typically can print 24 inches by like 500, so it doesn't really matter how long, but 24, 48, and 60 inch vinyl. So these are only a two color, basically one color because the vinyl comes as white depending on which type of vinyl you get. Um, cause there's lots of, there's certain vinyl that can print color or you could also color match and you can order specific colors from different companies like 3M, Avery, dry tack is kind of different, but yeah, mostly 3M. So this design is 53. So that would just be too big for our 48 inch vinyl. But if I scale this down to 46, cause you don't want it or even 47, you don't want it to be at 48 because that's the size of the vinyl. So 47 by 47. If we bring this up, we'll see if it's too small. And that might work for this design just because a big portion of it is um, covered by the wheel well. So that might work. And if your customer doesn't mind or your client doesn't mind it being that small or if it's for you and you don't mind it being that small, then that would be a good option. And that would save you some money because you wouldn't have to buy um, as much vinyl. Or if you were set with the 53 inches, then you would have to buy 60 inch vinyl, but then you wouldn't have to scale it at all because it would fit. So this design, it would be pretty easy to prep, honestly. And I'll begin by creating something that we call a weed box. So I'll just make a selection around my design and I'll make the stroke black. And then I'll just go to object path, offset path by a quarter inch or uh, even an eighth inch. And then I'll delete my inner outline. So when this prints, it will print with the weed box and I'll explain that more in a second. I'll add the exact same thing to the door decal. And same thing by going to object path and offset path. And delete the inner outline. So I'll group that together with command G and same with this. So let's compact this to print, which will save you money and material. So I'll just align it to this big decal at the bottom and I'll align it point 0.125. And if you wanted the exact same thing on both sides, then you'd have to duplicate this. So like that would be perfect. And this all together is, if we go to our properties, 53 by 111, almost 112. For a 60 inch vinyl, that would be perfect. So let's just group that and align that to the car, which is what I do because I usually send 
my design off to our printer and I just like to make it as nice and um, clean as possible. You could simply write this up as a die cut, but now let's assume that these circles are more than one color. So let's make this a gradient like that. So how do you tell the printer to cut in a circle? Um, that's pretty easy. Let's just copy both of these circles uh, with command C and I'll paste it back in place with command shift and V. We need to create a color swatch for the printer to recognize that this is a cut path. All right, so let's create a new swatch in our swatches panel by going to new swatch. And I'll just title this cut contour. This is what our printer recognizes as a cut path. So it doesn't really matter what the color is, but I usually go to color type, make that spot color, and the color mode is CMYK. Everything is zero except for magenta, just so it's obvious that this is a cut path having a bright pink color. So let's make these two with our direct selection tool, that cut path. And you can see it has that little corner there. And if you hover over it, it says cut contour. So it doesn't matter where this is. It could be a in front of your design or behind. It's not gonna print this color, but I'll move it behind just so it looks nice. Send it back. As long as that cut path is behind this text or these designs. And yeah, I'll move it back to behind. And one thing that we will want to do is to add a, a bleed. So actually I'll move it back in front and just hide those for now. I'll group those together and hide. And I'll select these gradients and then um, then show that layer. And I'll go to object, path, offset path, and make sure preview is selected and yeah, that'll be good. So we're just adding bleed. So when the printer cuts along this cut path, there's not just a white outline on the outside because the vinyl would be white if it's printing color. So with those new changes, we want to create new weed boxes. Weed boxes aren't really necessary, I guess, but for more complex designs, they help the, the installer line up or space your designs and you know gives them something to to cut and one thing to remember if i find the right layer is that we want to mirror one of these designs so i will mirror this one not including the weed box i guess it doesn't really matter it's square so i'll include it why not and then we'll just reflect it and then go to our text and reflect that and make it on a negative angle. So now it is mirrored for both sides. And then you'll do the same thing with this. It doesn't really matter actually, because this will be printed off as a, a separate decal. So you could apply it at any angle that you want. So we'll leave that, that doesn't really matter. But for this, um, it's actually on the right angle. All right, so it's all looking good. So this is, yes, yeah, slightly bigger, running at 112 and 53. And that is how you design a wrap in Adobe Illustrator. I hope this video helped. If it did, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all of our social media to never miss more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.